Well, welcome back to another episode of Buffalo Happy Hour. Mike, what's going on? Derek, we are with our friends over at Eddie's Liquor, and there's a lot of things to discuss, so let's dive right in. We are sitting with our friend, again, Tony mm-hmm. Young, Three Chord Bourbon. Uh, so you want to tell everybody what we're, what we're doing, what's going on? Yeah, yeah. We've been, uh, we've been busy since we last spoke with you guys. Uh, our company, uh, we're now in 17 states. Uh, we've also brought some new SKUs to market, I think, last time. You saw the rye, the blended, and the 12 bar. Mm-hmm. And we said that we'd have some new SKUs coming down the road. Yeah. Uh, what we brought with us today is our, our signature. This is our Halo brand. This is our whiskey drummer. Uh, this is unfiltered, uncut, uh, individually numbered bottle. Uh, this is bottle number four of batch one. Wow. So you guys will be drinking this with me today. Yes. Uh, we had to... <laughs> Unfortunately for you guys, bottle four was the best I could do. So, uh, you know, we had to give Neil bottle bottle one, number two at the office, and number three went to my house. So, absolutely, no um, of course, right? <laughs> uh, but uh, no, the, the I'll tell you, we're really excited. We're moving right along, and one of the things that you know, as rectifiers, that we discussed, I think last time was the ability to to bring different bourbons together in harmony. You know, and. Uh, strange collaboration, which I'm sure we'll we'll get together on soon. I wanted to have them both for today, but unfortunately, it just didn't happen. Uh, is a Kentucky straight finished in Pinot Noir barrels, uh, which is a really cool backstory. Uh, the name of the product is Strange Collaboration, and uh, mm-hmm. Neil Giraldo, a really good friend, is is Brian Strange, who owns Strange Family Vineyards in Santa Rita Hills, California, which is a small family-owned winery, and their kids used to date, um, and. Johnny Strange, who was a uh, thrill seeker, uh, (laughs) base jumper, you know, those guys that jump off cliffs. That scares the hell out of me. Yeah, well, unfortunately, God rest his soul, uh, he died in an accident when he was 23 or 24 years old. There's a great website for the kid. He's out on, uh, they're doing all kinds of fundraising and skate parks and stuff in his memory, and they're really nice people. The family's great. Um, So Neil wanted to develop something with him. And, you know, so we came up with Strange Collaboration, which is Kentucky Straight finished in Pinot Noir barrels. And a pro, couple bucks of every bottle is going back to support the Johnny Strange Memorial Funds that build these parks for kids in California. So That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, you know, the company, what I, I said, you know, we're, we're about giving back to the community. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, we have to uh, include our community in everything we do. You know, we help out the communities that where, we're, where we can. Uh, whether you're in New York, California, Kentucky, Tennessee, wherever we are mm-hmm. uh, in our 17 states. So uh, it's a real exciting time for us. And we're starting to get a little recognition. Our 12 bar reserve, uh, batch seven, which this bottle happens to be, uh, was uh, 94 points in the Whiskey Advocate. So, wow. yeah, three quart 12 bar reserve is up for Whiskey of the Year. Congratulations. Uh, yeah, on thank that. you. Huge. We're real That's excited. Amazing. Absolutely. Yeah. So, Uh, Ari's been doing a great job for us at the distillery and bringing everything together and you know his background in 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 blending in France and Elevage with the wood and everything is really we're we're buying some really cool barrels right now there's a lot more to come and uh, before I walked in I walked away for that phone call was actually a brewer that we're going to be doing a collaboration with with a brewer down in Kentucky so it's real exciting our people down in Kentucky hooked up with a brewery and they're going to start finishing our, our bourbon off in their in their in their stout barrels wow you know which would be pretty cool yeah it's gonna you be know. very interesting yeah taste. and they're gonna take those barrels and do a stout in those barrels so Ooh. they'll actually have two they'll have a bourbon finished uh in a stout barrel and then we'll have a, a, a stout finished in a bourbon barrel that's incredible yeah because yeah, it'll blend both clientele mm-hmm. the bourbon and the beer drinkers yeah that's cool yeah. you know and it's we're working with all kinds of distillers right now on the collaboration front and you know, you're starting to see things. I don't know if you guys stayed on top of the tabloids, but uh, Constellation bought uh, Copper and Kings yesterday. Oh, and, okay. Yeah, and, you know, they do a lot of collaborations. They're brandy producers in Kentucky. Great property. If you ever get a chance to go down there, you should go see them. They're great people, super nice. Uh, but what they're doing is is you're starting to see some of these things. People are looking for things that are a little different. Um, you know, single distilleries are great, and, you know, traditional methods are fantastic, but... You know, we're evolving. It's the 21st century. What new can we bring to the market and have people get excited about? Mm-hmm. People are getting really excited about blends and barrel finishes. And, you know, if you think back to this craft boom and things that other brands did and people went crazy for them, you know, that's only magnifying, you know, sure. more and more and more. So that's um, incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, great stuff. Um, 
Are we going to have a cocktail, or, uh, just a little sipper while we're sitting here? Sure. sure. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> so this is the whiskey drummer. This is a Kentucky 15-year-old. Uh, this sits a little higher in the Rick House. So as we know, uh, the, the water evaporates at a little little lower temperature. Um, it'll age differently it'll, from if it's, it's lower. Yeah, it's aging, okay. aging differently than if it's on the ground. So um, we're real excited about this. Uh, it heats up real nice, and it gives us a little bit more of a... Uh, kick that's so, incredible yeah so this is 117.9 proof Ooh, yeah, it'll give it a little uh, kick yep and you know we're going to be re there's this is very limited so but we're going to be retailing for about 189.99 throughout western new york sure. um and uh throughout the country uh we're trying to keep our prices consistent but we have limited allocations uh for all of our states for batch one so whether you're in new york or you're in connecticut or you're in uh, South Carolina, you can pick up a bottle. Mm -hmm. So looking at this being a higher price point bourbon, one thing that we like to look at is the label to see if the label mm -hmm. does kind of coincide with that high price point and everything like that. So mm -hmm. this has a very different label than what you have for your other products. Yeah. Can yeah. you talk about that? Yeah. So, you know, one of the things that we try to do at our company, and I think I, you know, we're, we're our corporate headquarters is based here in Buffalo. Mm -hmm. yep. We're trying to do as much as we can with, with Buffalo people. You know, our web design team is here. Our labeling company is here. Uh, you know, everything that we can do locally, we do. We have fulfillment companies here that are doing all of our work. And we're trying to keep as much revenue uh, in, pumping into the local communities as we can. Mm -hmm. uh, so we wanted to do uh, something. Uh, this is called Whiskey Drummer. Okay, this is our 15-year-old, uh, age 15 years down in Kentucky. We purchased the barrels and brought them to our, our facility in Michigan. Uh, but the real cool thing about this is the picture of the label. I don't know if you guys can see it. I'll get a little closer to the camera. We'll there. get, yeah, just in case. You we'll guys could do some local close-ups yeah. or something. Yeah. But this is a local Buffalo artist named uh, Rick Christian. Uh, he's, uh, he's a whiskey aficionado himself, loves a, a good bourbon, a good scotch. And I've known him for a long time, and we asked him to put together some renditions for this. And I told him the whiskey drummer story, and this is what he came up with, which is pretty pretty cool. And I, you guys, I know you guys will show this, but uh, do you guys know the story of the whiskey no, drummer? No, no, please tell. So back in, uh, let's do, let's have a, a cheers. I love story toast. time. Yeah, yeah the stories are great. Salute. Thank you. Salute. Salute. We can we can do some uh, sci more scientific conversation in a few minutes. Oh yeah. That doesn't taste like it's that high of a proof. No, that's dangerous. That's super smooth. Yeah, yeah. That's a beautiful product. Mm -hmm. You can, what I like about this too is you can tell that it's been aged 15 years. You have that very high oak yeah, or yeah. a ton of oak tasting to it. It's very oaky. We have a little bit higher corn count here. Not by much, okay. uh, just, a, just a couple point percentage points and uh, you, a little less rye. So we've got 10% malted barley in here, which, you know, which is, which is, doesn't, it's not contributing to the flavor quite a lot. It's really the wood that you're you're getting here, um, and it's it's a lot of it is the uh, uh, is the corn sweetness. So that alcohol combined with it is really great. So, um, you guys coming over? He's out there right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, the whiskey drummer is a guy that uh, or is the reference for a guy that's a salesperson. So, oh, okay. Back so in, you are a whiskey drummer. I guess I'm a whiskey drummer, <laughs> exactly. Uh, so, in a lot of uh, a lot of uh, uh, post prohibition uh, salespeople went door to door. You know, the door to the fast sure. sell, whether they're selling vacuum cleaners or bourbon or whatever. And uh, when prohibition ended in Louisville, Kentucky, a guy went running down the street with a drum, banging the drum, saying, "Come out, get in your bourbon. Come out and get your bourbon. It's prohibition's over." And people started calling liquor salesmen whiskey drummers because they, wow. the way that guy went down the street. Uh, back in the 1970s, somebody did something with whiskey drummer. I'm not familiar with I know they're, they're not in existence anymore, but we were actually able to trademark this, uh, this package. So we're real excited about that. And, you know, people love hearing, the, you know, why is this and how come that? Absolutely. And, you know, authenticity is so important in today's, for today's consumer and being able to talk about something. And that's three chords all about you know sure. enjoying your music and hanging out with friends responsibly and you know being able to talk about different things so that's so cool the, that's impressive that you were able to trademark that yeah yeah i was really shocked uh as well um there was a, a distiller back in the 70s haas or something like that i think that did something with a porcelain decanter oh, called okay. whiskey drummer yeah. very nice yeah i'm not really totally familiar with them but uh 
you know, so we, we wanted to uh, put our, our type halo type products mm -hmm. in something like this. And as you can tell, the, the bottle shape's just a little different. You know, maybe that most, a little more post prohibition look with a shorter, squattier bottle. And, uh, and they do that a little higher, uh, higher bottle for today's. Mm -hmm. You know, so we, we honor the tradition, but we also have some technology in there uh, that we work with. Sure. So, Absolutely. Um, yeah, but hey, listen, we have our hosts here with us, and we thank you guys for inviting us in. Yes. Hey, you're following the, the mask rules. That's important. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> later. Uh, Tyler, you want to grab a couple glasses? We'll get you guys some. Right? Yeah, yeah. Mike, you want to help those guys out with those? Yeah. Yeah, help so behind guys. us are the owners of the Eddie's Liquor Store that we are at. We worked with them to help get Tony here for us to talk with them. Uh, this is a huge opportunity for us, again, because of this awesome product that's releasing so thank you guys both uh from Addie's for helping us and kidding? we love this brand this is awesome <laughs> yeah this is really cool we're uh pouring some samples for them too since this is uh, so just talking about how widely available it is at this moment this uh, is very very like uh, October, brand new yeah october 1st uh we're trying to we're, we'll be rolling out whiskey drummer the local distributor has orders in um, you know, it'll be a six pack per, you know, major liquor store sure. kind of thing. And then some bottles for some, you know, some re restaurant tours that want to carry these kinds of products. Um, but you know, it's kind of a fun thing right now. Mm -hmm. These guys are all going out and trying to find the, you know, the bourbon seekers. I don't know what everyone's sure. called treasure hunters, yeah, bourbon, treasure hunters, you know, exactly. So, uh, we wanted to be a part of that and this is something that we put together for it. I so think it's extremely exciting. I, I'm, look, I'm looking to see the faces on these guys. These guys haven't tried this before, so I know. I'm, this is awesome. I'm a little curious. Right <laughs> Can we open that? Yeah. So when, and just because this is considered a small batch, what is the logistics of calling something a small batch? Is there a certain number of barrels or anything that no, has well, to be? Well, you know, they're, they're, legally, they're, a small batch means absolutely nothing in the United States. Mm -hmm. Okay, Perfect. single barrel does. <laughs> Um, this is actually uh, a single barrel uh, that we have uh, product. Uh, this is batch number one, and in that batch was a thousand and eighty bottles, I believe. Okay. So this is bottle four of a thousand and eighty. But small batch really has no connotation um, legally. There's some people in the vodka business that might say, "Well, two thousand gallons is our small batch." At three quart, we say 300 gallons is a small batch wow. type thing. It's so, very limited. Well, you know what? It's important. Being, we don't have a lot of bourbon to choose from mm -hmm. uh, as a rectifier, and Ari needs to blend and make sure things are consistent. So as we blend together, for instance, our blended bourbon, which is a blend of Kentucky, Tennessee, and Indiana bourbons, it, one batch might be 80%, 10%, 10%, or 60%, 20%, 20% or sure. whatever, because it has to be consistent. So what we did with, uh, with, with Whiskey Drummer was uh, f take this 15 year old um, amongst themselves and we put 13 barrels, I think in a batch. Wow. Yeah, because there's not a lot of, ga there's, the gallonage in there is very limited. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, you know, I'd have to check with Ari t for the exact specifics, but uh, somewhere like that, you know what I mean? So uh, some barrels come with 15 gallons some barrels had 20 gallons and you know some were a little different if you're in the middle of the warehouse versus the outside walls versus the top floor versus the bottom floor they were a little different and we asked that they go as high as they could go for us so that we could have the alcohol content that's you know? awesome so there's some great guys like you know we we've got to figure something out uh in buffalo we had eight 90 degree days in a row that's true have, we broke that record yeah i yeah. would have loved to have taken a barrel and set it outside for 90 days or 90 degree days mm -hmm. and feel that that water evaporation and really get that alcohol content to really kick up you know you'd be sure. you'd be in 125 you know 127 proof right and it's really taste something like that so we might experiment with some stuff like that maybe we'll send it down to nevada there's some cool stuff going on down there oh yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> which it brings up a good point because i know a lot of our listeners don't necessarily understand I mean, we still learn yeah. every day. All the logistics behind the specifics on what you guys say and do behind the scenes to make a product what it is. Mm -hmm. You're mentioning moving barrels, the humidity, the temperature, and everything else. People somewhat understand that a rick house is important or a barrel house is important, but they don't know why or how much evaporation actually occurs and the science behind that. Mm -hmm. So you mentioning that actually opens up an entire can of worms for our listeners. So thank you. Yeah. Uh, you know what? We're always available for questions. You know, you can email us or, uh, you know, even hit our website, 
you know, we're happy to talk to people. And we actually have a, uh, some science behind some of the things we do that we picked up from, you know, Tennessee University, you know, actually literally Honestly. doctorates and, and, you know, 250 page publications about evaporation. And, you know, I, the, the industry as a whole has really taken a hard look. You know, everybody said, well, the flavor has been coming from the wood for years. Well, how much of the flavor? What does the right. yeast mean? What does the environment mean? You know, um, opening the windows in the rickhouse to create air circulation at certain times of the year during the month changes can change that flavor. Sure. There's, you know, I, there's competitors that we that we we watch to say, what what are they doing? They're experimenting with this. They're experimenting with that. We're taking a look, and it's kind of like an industry of best practices. Mm-hmm. You know, dep- what do you want to achieve? Sure. You know, we're trying to achieve balance products that are well balanced. You know, right. And that sometimes uh, comes in the day. We just want to be an all American product, so we're trying to buy bourbon from all over the country. You know, as it's re- regulated, mm-hmm. uh, you know, legally, of course. Uh, but but the point being is that there's different characteristics happening in different regions because of the climate. Uh, and and uh, the environment and, and, and production practices and what people are doing and even wood, we uh, we've had great success. I think the last time I was on the show, mm-hmm. I mentioned with you guys our hybrid barrels. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Remember? Yep. And, oh boy, wait, these things are great, um, and they're uh, they're actually in part in the strange collaboration project. Uh, but the the front, the alternating American and French staves, French staves have eight times as the vanillin. That American oak staves do. It's just oh, really? a slightly different, uh, what do you call that, you know, gene of oak, right? Sure. So um, it's not as hard as Japanese oak, which is like 200 times as hard and has 200 times the vanillin that American oak has. Mm-hmm. Um, I might not be saying that quite right or the multiplications, but sure. um, if Ari was sitting here, he'd help you with that. <laughs> yeah. uh, but, you know, the point being is that different oak strains do different things to the whiskey and that people are really starting to pay attention to that. That's sensational. Yeah, what do you so fellas think? Wow. He doesn't like a lot of things. No? I'm just an angry person, but this <laughs> is really good. Thank you. So what's the proof on this? The 117.9 okay. on this so one. What is it? One, 10? Said 110. Yeah. Yeah, so it's almost 118. So I added just a splash of water. It was it melted it out. I did another another splash, which I usually never do. It wow, it opened up. I this caramel and vanilla. It's this is really good. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm not just saying that because you know me for years. I'm dead Thank on you. This, this yeah. is delicious. I appreciate cheers, it. Cheers to that. Yeah, so cheers, guys. I really do feel like this is like, I thought your 12 bar reserve was fantastic and you couldn't get better than that. This is like that on steroids. Yeah. Like this is amplifying all the good characteristics mm-hmm. in that 12, par, 12 bar reserve and promoting it to a new level. Now, in regards to the mash bill, which mash bill is this most similar to is it the 12 bar or is it just kind of unique in its own right no it's well it's a little unique in its own right it's like uh, 78 and a half you know we have we have some decimal points in there naturally because uh, yeah. you guys are extremely scientific <laughs> <laughs> yeah science is where i mean it's where it's going right yeah. so uh i believe it's 78 9 and 9.5 or whatever and then 12.5 sure mm-hmm. there's two obviously it's only two of them have I think it's 78.5 12 and 9.5 or something like that. Okay. So from our conversation earlier uh, in our first interview, I, I believe the 12 bar was Neil's favorite, right, at the time? Yeah. So yeah. whose tasting profile was this one based <laughs> off of? Neil. Neil's, you know, Neil, okay. Neil, Neil's with us all the time. <laughs> Come on now. Um, you know, as we, as we always do, we have a panel. You mm-hmm. know, there's never just one palette because I might like something different than he likes than mm-hmm. what he likes. And, uh, you know, I'm a little older than Ari. Neil's just a couple months older than I am. I don't want him to hear this, you know. Um, but it's interesting. Our panel has various ages, backgrounds, you know, and, and something different for each person. And as we get the input, uh, you know, we've had, we've sent this out to actually a couple of the bourbon groups around the country uh, that pre-ordered. Mm-hmm. And uh, we got some tasting notes from them, and we had a little powwow with them just to try and figure out what they thought as well because we we didn't want to just roll something out just for the sake of sure. doing it. it's got to be a good product you know and sure we have five people sitting here and you know it's okay to say hey it's not for me i what i tell you before 
what I say? Did I tell you 12 bar really kind of isn't yeah. for me? Yep. Mm -hmm. I, I prefer the rye is my favorite SKU sure. to this point. So no, ne to, to answer your question, Neil's favorite is now is, is Whiskey Drummer. Sure. Uh, and he was very instrumental in, in, in tasting that product. You know, uh, since we had the invention of Zoom, uh, well, I don't know if it's the invention of Zoom, but I got to <laughs> tell you, um, you know, we have Zoom calls all the time. Strange collaboration. We tasted with Neil and, and Brian Strange to oh, cool. go through it all. Yeah, yeah. So it's a team effort, you know. Absolutely. Everybody gets a gets some input, and uh, it uh, it comes out nice, you yeah. know. So. so, so I know that we, we heard the tasting notes over there. Uh, do you want to elaborate a little bit on what you're tasting with this? Because this yeah. is going to be a little bit hard to get your hands on for anybody. <laughs> so just for them to experience. Yeah, there, what we're there, doing. there's it's all wood. Yeah. You know, there's there's a great some great caramel. Uh, I get a, a ton of vanilla. Uh, there's there's a little bit of char in this, mm -hmm. not not quite a lot. The wood's really powerful here, uh, but uh, you know I the hug. Remember we talked about the hug. Yep. Yes. Where's our hug though? Our hug is still right, real high. Oh, you yeah. don't want the hug to be down here. No, not right? at all. You know we talk about that yeah. still every episode about the hugs. Yeah. And, I mean that's credit to you to telling us about that and for us yeah. to putting it into words because we still use that to this day. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, that's not something that's appealing to me as a consumer. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, I, I, we think about the consumer and what the consumer is going to want to try. Um, and as I stated before, all of our products are different and different proofs mm -hmm. with different flavor profiles, you know. So this consumer may not be this consumer or this consumer may not be that consumer sure. or this consumer, you know. But there's something for everyone in our portfolio, which is something we're trying to do, mm -hmm. you know. And Absolutely. It's, it's kind of what being in the band is all about, you Absolutely. know. Like you take yeah. a little bit of each guy and you put them together and find something for everybody. So. That's awesome. There's, I love this. There are some baking spice as well that you pick up, but it's more towards the ending note than the mm -hmm. initial taste. The initial taste is just extremely smooth, and then I'm picking up the caramel and the vanilla up yeah. front. Yeah. It's nice. This is a very good, like, sipper bourbon that you don't want to end. Yeah. And that's dangerous because this is, I mean, it is expensive, but worth it. Yeah. I mean, I think that you underprice this. Well, you know, there's a lot of products in the marketplace and uh, that are, you know, two fifty, three hundred dollars mm -hmm. that are, you know, in this category. You know what else picked? You know, you know who picked this up too was Neil. He okay. says there's something in there. We kept going back and forth with like a chocolate, you know, some sort of mocha type character. Like whether we don't want to say it was a coffee or yeah. necessarily a chocolate. Do you guys remember Nestle Quick? Yes. Oh yeah. Think about Nestle Quick. I'm too young for that. Yeah, you probably don't know. <laughs> and think about Nestle Quick and then take a sip of the burn. You, you can pick up that mm -hmm. that underlying tone here uh, right behind your baking spice in, in your woods, but you can pick up a little Nestle's Quick in there. Yeah. And it's just a faint cocoa character that's very specific, you know, and, and it's like, wow, this is really cool. You put that, that in the ending note, right? It's in, it's in the, it's in the tasting right notes, yeah. 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 Right yeah. And we were sitting on the Zoom meeting, and there was four of us, and you know, he's like, I can't pinpoint it. I'm sorry. Well, Ari, what, what, there's something there. He's right. You know, we kept going, we kept kicking chocolate, but it wasn't real defined. You know, there wasn't a real yeah. pronounced It's, it's a powder. Yeah, it's more of a powder, powder, powder character. Than yeah. it is just mm -hmm. straight chocolate that you would get. Mm -hmm. This is delicious. It is. I like it. Thank you very much for letting yeah. us yeah, thank actually you. Let's, come Let's and try take this. a look and see how long this finish lasts. Yeah. Oh, geez. Because it's, it's, the finish really hangs with you. And I, even in the 15, 20 minutes we were talking about Whiskey Drummer, there's an evolution in the glass, mm -hmm. you know, which I think you get from a lot of our products. What it tastes like right now is not going to be what it tastes like in 20 minutes sure. and 20 minutes later. Uh, you know, and that's really, this, this is a special, it's uncut, unfiltered. Um, you know, it's. Uh, so you essentially just take it from the barrel. Well, we blend the barrels together. Okay of the same product so it's a small batch it, I, it doesn't qualify it's, we're not a single barrel mm -hmm. but what we are is a blend of i think there was 12 or 13 barrels dumped into this batch but that's what blenders are we got to stick to blending mm -hmm. right you know because that's who we are um and you know when you think of three chord and the evolution of music and everything from the blues to today's hits you know it's all about having a team and a collaboration and you know, everybody pulling in the same direction. Mm -hmm. And our products are kind of who we are. Sure. You know, and that's why we like to support our local people and 
you know, uh, be involved with all of you people and making sure we're we're having fun together and having conversations, sipping for great bourbon and right. and hanging out. You know, but this this product itself is great. You yeah. know, and if you know, we will do single barrels of this, but for the most part, we actually had a club that bought sight unseen, sight untasted, I should say. Um, 250 bottles of whiskey drummer finished in honey barrels. Ooh. So we were working with a bee farmer, um, Fern Farms down in, te- in Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, great fella, his name's Huff, and he's he's a dynamic guy, love him to death. And, you know, he's I care, he's got a million bees or whatever, and his, <laughs> you know, but what we did was he wanted to do a bourbon finished honey. So it's, yeah, we'll send you a few barrels. We're like, well, what if those barrels we're brought back with just, a, you know, we'll do a little experiment. And because we are scientific, he was able to measure a 53-gallon barrel. Uh, it had X amount of evaporation, and then it'll crystallize the sugar mm-hmm. in the barrel. So he only took out 52 gallons and 51.5 gallons. And so inside the barrel, he was honey. able to measure that the wood absorbed X amount of honey into the staves. That's insane. We then brought those barrels back to the distillery. If you go out to our Instagram, like you can see people in the distillery rolling around the barrels to get the honey to interact in the whiskey. Um, and I'm here to tell you in four weeks we had some nice flavor. We're going to let it keep going. But, sure. You know, you could pick it up. But this club's uh, pulling the trigger after another month, and they, they want this bottled up, you know, sent down to them after it's sitting in honey barrels. And Neil, Neil was like, oh, we can't do that. We can't. Are you kidding me? You're going to ruin it. I'm like, right. I've already had it after four weeks. It is phenomenal. It's not really. I'll I go, that. it's really good. <laughs> so um, I've, I'm going to have to save him a bottle so he can try it. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, and that goes back to everybody's individual tasting. I mean, <laughs> he might not like the honey taste to it. But, I mean, that would add a completely different layer to this. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's a whole other element. And that would keep that tasting note or that ending note going. I mean, mm-hmm. you, you were just timing it. That lasted forever. I'm still, still doing it's it. Still, yeah, it's still in my mouth. This is so. oily. But it's. I don't want to put water in it to see how it evolves I don't because either. I just want to keep chugging it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think a little water probably add a little white pepper. Mm-hmm. You know, it opens it up a little bit, and we'll, you get a little more. Not that there's a lot of a lot of uh, rye in there, but you'll get a little bit more, a little bit more spice coming forward, or it might be a little softer white pepper mm-hmm. character. So when does this full on release to the world? Sometime October, first week of October. First delivery day is next month. Yeah. For us. Yep. October. One. It's like a Wednesday. So October very Wednesday. early October. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So early October, this is on the shelves. You can find it. Addie's Wine and Spirits. You can find it at Addie's Wine and Spirits. <laughs> I'm just a guest here, you guys. Hey, yep. listen, I'm, I'm mm-hmm. thankful for everybody. Thank you for bringing me in and, yeah. you know, you guys. Absolutely. Too. Thank so, you. I know that we talked to uh, at the beginning about how you're in 17 states now mm-hmm. what states have you expanded to and what states do you see this going to the most i guess um, yeah well you know we love new york yep you know so new york's gonna get what we can give them that's right Go uh, bills. yeah <laughs> uh, <laughs> the bills um but uh we just expanded to kansas uh oh, south wow. carolina uh we just um connecticut You'll see this, uh, every state that's open, and we had allocated about 28 cases, give or take, to a few of the newer states. Uh, you know, we're not doing much in some of our states, so we're, we, you know, it was, uh, each state that got an allocation was around 28 mm-hmm. cases. So when you say that you expanded into, say, South Carolina, does that mean you're available anywhere in South Carolina, or you're just at one location within that state? No, no, we, we go through distributors. Okay. So we've signed on with a distributor in South Carolina, and they'll start to proliferate the marketplace and go out to people like Addie's Liquor to to be able to, um, Perfect. you know, okay. sell our product for us, yeah. if you will. Okay. So Another thing with this is you continue drinking it with the proof being what it is at 117. You don't feel like it's overpowering. No, I don't and think And so, I think that, and we've talked about this quite a bit, about what is your perfect proof and what do you feel like is the best or the highest number of proof that you're okay with. If you would have went higher than this into like the 125s, it wouldn't have had the same effect. No, I think you're right. And I typically, myself, do not care for products above 100 proof. Mm-hmm. Just just my opinion. And yeah. the American consumer historically has been around the 80, 84 yeah. mark, correct? Yeah. Because I remember yeah. we were talking about that yeah. before. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's ironic because if you go to Europe, it's 86. Right. You know, so European, you know, palates prefer things a little differently mm-hmm. than American palates. 
uh, I like to call it Kool-Aid generation or Kool-Aid, Kool-Aid country, <laughs> I should say, with the big red guy to walk through the wall any minute. Um, but, you know, we always talk sweet or we always talk dry, but we're really sweet. We're, we're Pepsi country, mm-hmm. Coca-Cola, yeah. whatever. Um, but for me, I like to taste the characteristics of the product. And if the alcohol is too overpowering, which I think we have a nice balance here to pick up the flavors and the characteristics so that the alcohol isn't the most dominant uh, component that your palate's picking up, sure. um, that this is okay. Uh, I love this product. I think it's gonna be a great product uh, for us in the marketplace. Yeah. Uh, I prefer a little bit more spice, so you know the, the rye is my, mm-hmm. my go-to product for us. Um, okay. But I like rice. You know, mm-hmm. if you could ask me to make a old fashioned I'm I'm putting a rye in there. Mm-hmm. I'm not making no mild fashions with a with a bourbon. Sure. You know, uh, the, the the sugar components that go into an old fashioned kind of push that bourbon to the back, you know, of your palate. And you can't pick up that character. I want to taste it. Yeah. Uh, so I think a rye makes a nicer a nicer old fashioned yeah. uh, than than a bourbon does. But I'm not putting anything in this. No. You know, but I, I'll tell you what. A Lewis said I put a little water, and I, I might consider a couple drops of water. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. I think that you could be okay with that. Uh, but I just think it's another thing that, that we really contributes to the collaboration of our products. And, um, you know, the, the, we're trying to use multiple woods in everything because most single casts, it's one character that you're picking up and where that barrel ages in the warehouse. Even the same producer puts a barrel here, a barrel in the middle of the warehouse, you know, top of warehouse up against the wall, middle, lower warehouse against mm-hmm. the wall. Those three barrels are vastly different. Sure. You know, so if you can find some that you can put together, and come up with something pretty pretty cool. Oh yeah, I feel like this product is really just symbolizes your growth as a company mm-hmm. from the blended bourbon and then coming out with the rye, then the twelve bar to really set yourself into a different tier of clientele where you're like, look, this is our premier product, and now you've released this, which it kind of blends all the approaches you guys take between the community involvement with the label, the story behind it, and mm-hmm. then also the science behind everything that you guys do has really risen you to a different tier of we're not just going to put out garbage and there's a reason why we're priced at where we're priced and it's because of all the man hours that we've took before the product actually releases in october because it's that has to get paid for too right like so it's not Mm -hmm. just something that's 115 to 120 proof it's this is it. I mean, yeah. you guys are really taking a stand of saying we're going to put out quality products, yeah. and if you want to invest in us, it's because we're investing it right back into you. So, congrats. I mean, this yeah. is an incredible achievement. What do you guys think about doing your own uh, your own label? I would love it. Yeah, we'd love yeah, it. Maybe a local artist or something. Maybe yeah. have a little competition to see uh, if we could do the the Buffalo Bur- uh, Buffalo Happy Hour uh, bottling of three quart bourbon. That would be awesome. Yeah. Absolutely. Is Let's that something it. three chord would? Yeah, absolutely. We would love to do that for you guys. That is. You sweet. put it together. We'll talk. Uh, we'll talk off air. But uh, you you come up with something similar to this. We'll put it in the same package. Use your artist label, and it'll it'll be a, a, a barrel specifically for people who listen to Buffalo Happy Hour, and uh, we'll make it work. That's awesome. So if anyone listening right That's now wants to be a part of that, make sure to subscribe on YouTube. Uh, follow all of our Instagram pages. Uh, because this is something that we're super excited for. So thank you for that opportunity. That's yep. awesome. Perfect. Thank you. Cool. All right, Tony, anything else that you'd like hey, to add? I'm all set, guys. All I appreciate right. your time as always. Thanks for having me on board. Thank you so I much. Appreciate we appreciate it. it. This has been right, a three chord. Thank you. All right. Are we thank you very the much. Still? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. We're fine. <laughs> we're across Salud, the sick table. We're good. Salud. Thank you.